what I was selling my first painting. You know, $1,000 is a big deal. You showed the real Castelli's, right? You mean sure, the sure. I moved uh, from the Green Gallery to the Real Castelli's Gallery when the Green Gallery closed. Sure. But then all this success, all, the, all this like sameness at the time finally began to look like sameness. I said to a guy in the gallery when I had a show like in the works, I asked him, what do you think I should do? You know, you know, give me some advice. And what he said to me, he didn't mean, but what it meant to me, I'll tell you. He said to me, oh, you don't have to worry about that. You're coons. And that repelled me. You see what I mean? You know, that, that, that to me meant, oh, you mean I should just paint the same way I've been painting? I, I didn't know what I was looking for, but I knew that isn't what I wanted to do. You know, I mean, I I wanted more. You know, I wanted to be, you know, better. The thing that I'm certain of, I don't think I'd be alive today if I'd gotten rich back then. I got to sit next to him. It was the opening of the Frank Stella show at the Whitney, and he was one of one. He was on one side of me, and I said to him, "I said, oh, Larry Coons, you were one of my favorite painters for a while," and he thought that was funny. I guess he thought it was funny. Most of the artists that I've shown from the beginning have gotten very expensive and there's a lot more money in selling something the second or third time usually than the first time i sold my first jeff coons at seven hundred dollars to the rubellas tell me a little bit about jeff coons he's a wonderful guy wonderful his studio was above the old barney you know on 17th and 7th it was amazing to go into this room because it was covered with these plastic mirrors and then he had Velcro and these inflatable toys stuck to the mirrors. And this is like 1978. He starts talking to me like, well, you know, you have to have everything has to be new. Like, you know, like when they have cereal, they don't change the cereal. They just put new on it. So this is the new, and it foreshadows a lot of the whole thing about branding and what people attribute to Andy Warhol. Jeff knew all of that just by instinct. Around 79, 80, all these people would say to me, hey, have you met Jeff Koons? You've got to meet Jeff Koons. He works on Wall Street. Of course, Jeff was working in a bucket shop, like out of the wolf of Wall Street. So someone told me the story that one of the legends of Wall Street comes in one day and all the, the salesmen are enthralled. You know, you're amazing. And this guy says, you think I'm good? Wait till you see this guy Coons. Mailed in my company a postcard a few weeks back requesting information on penny stocks that had huge upside potential. With Jeff gets on the phone and they're listening to him. It is perhaps the best thing I've seen in the last six months. And everything stops, and they watch Jeff Coons in one phone session go from getting the lead, softening him up, and closing it in one conversation. They were just in awe. They'd never seen this before. How'd you fucking do that? This is 